Welcome to Musician Profiles, celebrating racial diversity, Ixom's monthly series of videos to feature our musicians of color. I'm Stephen Lafer. I'm a horn player in the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra and Ixom alternate delegate. I'm honored to be presenting these short videos this year. Today, we're speaking with a very well-dressed Andres Pichardo Rosenthal, assistant principal percussion with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. He's showing me up even wearing a tie to this. <laughs> Born in Managua, Nicaragua, and raised in Los Angeles, Andres studied at Rice, USC, and the New England Conservatory. Prior to joining the DSO in 2014, he performed with many orchestras around the country and has also played for movie soundtracks in Los Angeles. Welcome, Andres. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks for having me, Stephen. I, I take my interviews very seriously, so I, I like to, uh, you know, <laughs> look, look spiffy, you know? Good to know. It's a good look on you. <laughs> All right, should we get right down to it? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Can you tell us about the first time you saw an orchestra or heard an orchestra and why that might have made a big impression on you? Yeah, um, I, I'm lucky to have been raised in a very musical, loving family. Um, my mom exposed me to a lot of different types of music as a, as a child. And uh, my grandparents, who I, I grew up with, basically um, exposed me to a lot of different types of music uh, and classical music, especially. So I would go see the Los Angeles Philharmonic uh, as a kid. And I remember going to see them uh, in, for a young person's concert and seeing uh, Peer and the Wolf. And I just think that that's a great piece to introduce to kids because it introduces the instruments, there's talking, there's a story. And I just remember being very invested in, in that and being very um, wowed by the, by the spectacle of an orchestra. I mean, it's, it's, it is a kind of an awe inspiring thing in many ways, especially for a young impressionable kid to see, uh, you know, so many people on stage together playing. So, and in a, in a beautiful hall, this was at the Dorothy Chandler um, in Los Angeles uh, before they went to Disney hall. So I um, just remember uh, that fond memory uh, etched in my mind, and and um, and that kind of led me to to be curious about taking up an instrument uh, in school. Okay, so you started off as a pianist. What led you to percussion? I think that the way my mind works, in particular, is that it, it's especially when I was younger, uh, but even now, it's hard for me to focus on one thing for too long uh, in other words I, I probably have i probably have adhd um and and uh, i didn't know it then but percussion is great because you, there's so many instruments you can there's an infinite amount of instruments that you can become proficient at and, and good at and i mean even now i mean I'm, I'm a classical percussionist but there's so many other types of percussion that you can be good at latin percussion you know african percussion um and and you could spend a lifetime doing that so i just i just love the fact that there's so many uh things that you can invest time in and and once you're once you think you got one down you go on to the next one so it kind of fueled my my uh, adhd brain to 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 be able to you know get good at and, and many instruments and and um in doing so you become you know you, obviously you work on your musicianship and and technique but i i just loved the um the yeah the, the 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 way that you can you can you can play many things to where where you know you, you you never really get bored you know and and that's what drew me to it also you get to play loud so that's fun <laughs> oh i'm well aware of that <laughs> so yeah yeah you're right guys. you're on the, you're on the receiving end of us so. <laughs> i always admire you guys running around with your like headless chickens back there between instruments and i i have a tough enough time just trying to get notes out of the horn sometimes well, it's funny you say that. I mean, you know, organization was not a strength of mine and and you have to be in, in, very organized when you play percussion because, you know, you got to set your mallets down and then when you turn around, you have to turn the page to this and have the mallets ready for the next part. So you have to devise ways to, you know, get past those those quick switches and, and, and not run into your colleagues and not drop sticks, which has happened, every, you know, in my in my life. So you try to avoid yeah. ways. So I think that was a, it's a good skill uh, that I learned in percussion to to, um, you know, that has hopefully permeated other uh, areas of my life. So so uh, anyway, it, the point is, is it's I, I've learned a lot from percussion and, um, you know, and, and uh, hopefully got became a better person out of it, you know. Sure. Was there a, a, a classic kind of like a eureka aha moment where you decided you wanted to do this for a living in a symphony orchestra? Yeah, so I went to um, 
a public school, uh, Santa Monica High School, um, and uh, we were lucky to have a really fantastic orchestra pro program um, in, in this public school. And uh, it was, um, you know, I, I, I was kind of doing it just just to be musical and, and you know kind of check check a box I, I didn't ever think i was going to pursue this as a career um but then they they actually went on tour to to um europe and um we raised uh, community uh, raised money for us to go and and we went on this incredible tour uh, and and with all the you know your friends and and uh two years later we went on a tour to, to china and and i'm just thinking to myself like we're playing music and we're traveling the world like this is what what better thing you know could you think of you know right. and and i'm like wait a second so you you can have a career and and do this like this is this is actually a career path so nothing else was really calling to me in terms of like you know the academics and um that just i don't know that, that just really like stuck with me that you know i was having so much fun playing and i could see the world and 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 have have really amazing experiences while enjoying my job so that that really um stuck with me and and sure enough you know the music's taken me really amazing places so um it's it's been worth it now, aside from the amazing places, have there been any particular concerts in Detroit that have really stuck in your mind? Something that you'll always remember? Uh, yeah, I mean, there there have been a lot of great concerts here, um, and uh, you know, w one of them. <laughs> I don't know if this is cheating uh, answering your question, but one of them was um, was uh, a, a concert that we did for for Detroit Jazz Festival. And we, it was an orchestra that was combined with uh, Chick Corea's band. And um, he, uh, he it, it was one of those magical shows where, where we're, we're playing our orchestra part and, and Chick Corea and his group are, are playing. And it was almost like a, we were all looking at each other like, I can't believe we're sharing the stage with, with, with that guy, <laughs> you know? And, 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 and it was just, it was just a, a magical energy. So that's something I won't forget. Um, and, uh, you know, also, uh, our current music director, um, Yadir Benyamini, uh, what he, I remember he filled in uh, last minute uh, to, to, to do um, a, a piece here. And, and I just remember that that energy that he brought when he first came was, was really palpable. And, and, and um, he really inspired us, uh, and especially for, for filling in last minute. It was, it was really a... Um, a very a very cool moment so there are moments you know that that really stand out like that uh every so often that i mean you know i, I feel like detroit puts on very good shows consistently but you know you don't get that like special feeling all the time it's it, it's it's there's certain moments that that click together that um that happen and and, and that's that's uh, that makes it kind of addicting you know sure so taking a step back and looking back over your shoulder into your deep, dark past, if today's Andres could give a piece of advice to himself during his student days, what would you tell him? I would tell him a lot. I would say a lot. There's a <laughs> lot of things that, that you wish you knew uh, younger at a younger age. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to say two things. One of them is, is to be, Hold, hold more patience with 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 oneself i mean it's easy to um be goal oriented and 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 think about the end result and 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 if you're not there you're frustrated and 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 you kind of look around at people next to you and you want to be better than it, it can be it can be a competitive environment and i think that pushes you but i think you have to take a step back and be patient and know that if you're putting in the work it's it will it will pay off um eventually and i think leading into that uh or or you know related to that is the the other thing i would say is is to enjoy the enjoy the process you know it, it, it kind of kind of some of the best pe some of the best concerts uh, um answering your last question i remember when when i was in tanglewood which is it, it's not a professional orchestra but those are some of the most magical uh concerts that 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 i remember being a part of and it was with students you know and 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 my time at, at rice and, and at nec and you know the 
there's a certain energy that the students bring that, you know, they might not play as well as the pros or whatever, but, but that energy uh, is unmatched, you know? So, so I would just say, you know, enjoy those moments. Cause you know, even though you're, you're goal oriented, the, the, the process is, is fun and, and you look fondly upon those memories. Final question. Um, I'm, feel really privileged to be able to present this series this year. Um, why do you think a series like this is is particularly important, especially right now? Well, I just think that w with anything, you know, seeing representation, um, someone that you can relate to or or someone that that you look up to do something that you want to do is is powerful and and it's and it's um you know, the, it doesn't matter what schools you go to or what people tell you. If you see someone that you look up to or that, hey, that person is like me or or or, or is from my background or or looks like me, you know, there, there's there's no uh, way to quantify that the importance of that. So I just think that, you know, having something like this and seeing people in orchestras who who, um, you know, have have similar, you know, backgrounds you know latino black you know whatever whatever it is i think that it's important to see people doing it and being you know in those positions and 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 um knowing that there that it there it is possible and that there's you know a support system um you know in place in in case you know you you, you need help getting to that level or knowing what to do to get to that level um, it can be intimidating if it's if it's very um, a homogenous uh, looking group or or a, a field. So I think it's important to yeah, like like what what you're doing. It's important to highlight these um, these types of 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 um, people and these paths so that people can know it's possible. One hundred percent. All right. Anything else you'd like Exxon listeners to know about you? Uh. uh no, uh, you, you know it all. You know it Good all. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got to you got to keep some things private. You know, <laughs> no, this is true. But uh, <laughs> all right, well then that wraps it up for us. And I thank you so much for your time. And it has been a pleasure talking with you. You too, Stephen. Thank you. Take care.